Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ, and anybody else who comes along and watches this video. Today is Wednesday, June 24th, and it's 2.38 p.m. I thought that with all the bad news that's been going on, and it looks like Satan has control of everything, and Nobody good is taking over and doing their part. I mean, that's the way it looks to me. Like, they're just like, oh, well, just let everybody have their way. We have to remember who is in control. And we may not understand his ways. The word says, my ways are higher than your ways. And my thoughts are higher than your thoughts. So our Father has a plan and he may be trying to get people to get on their knees and repent we don't know what's going on all the time everywhere but it's okay because God is still on the throne so I would like to read to you Psalm 104 just to remind you who is in control all right, I'm using the Blue Letter Bible and the NASB version. It starts off with the title, The Lord's Care Over All His Works. Verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul. The, o Lord, my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty, covering yourself with light as with a cloak, stretching out heaven like a tent curtain. Now, now man, that made me wonder. I've seen that light. I have seen the bright and glorious light when I almost crossed over I didn't quite when I was in an ambulance and my heart was so fast you couldn't count it and there was, I wasn't getting oxygen to my brain I've told y'all this story before but I saw that bright white light and I didn't feel all the pokes and pricks as they were trying their best to get an IV going they had to get an IV going to push that medicine that stops your heart and then after a few seconds, it starts up again. Well, he finally got one in my neck here. But the point is, the point is, I saw that light. And I'm just wondering, my Bible here, that I read this in this morning, said that the author was anonymous. Oh, it wasn't uh said to be written by david so it makes me wonder who wrote this and did he see that bright white light anyway there are things when we get to heaven we're going to find out you know i keep telling people this that just wait when we get to heaven we'll find out this stuff we don't know we can't know everything even john said at the very end of the Gospel of John, it says, And if all the things that Jesus had done, never mind the Old Testament prophets and, and uh, the kings and uh, the, the people that would be considered a teacher or a rabbi, never mind all what they would have written had the Holy Spirit used them, He said that what Jesus wrote was so many things that the world could not contain the volumes of all the things he did. We have so much to look forward to learning, and I'll bet we sit on our seats with bated breath on, oh, wow, that was so cool, Lord. I wish I could have seen you do that in Fall Winlow. He'll make a big screen appear and he'll show it. I mean, we we don't know. He could if he wants to. Anyway, I'll move on. So he stretched out the heaven like a tent curtain. He lays the beams of his upper chambers 
in the waters. He makes the clouds his chariot. He walks upon the wings of the wind. And the wind, let me go to tools because it's going to come up again. Of the wind is Ruach. That's the same word as Ruach HaKodesh, Holy Spirit. Okay? The Ruach is spirit or small s, spirit, which could mean wind, could mean breath, side, the wings of your side. It's most likely the wings of the Holy Spirit. And the others are anger, cool, courage that don't really pertain. Okay, so I imagine it's the Holy Spirit. Anyway, moving on. He makes the winds his messenger. Now, when I clicked on the footnote, it says his angels or spirits. So most likely it's angels. Because we know he uses angels as messengers. He makes the winds or angels his messengers. Flaming fire his ministers. So he uses fire as ministers. Probably different kinds of fire like the tongues of fire when the Holy Spirit landed upon all the people in the upper room on the day of Pentecost when the church began you know it didn't burn them so that was another kind of flaming fire holy fire verse 5 he established the earth upon its foundations so that it will not totter forever and ever and totter means to move out of place you see, the earth is the center of everything and it does not spin around things. Everything else moves around in the sky above. You covered it with the deep as with a garment. That's water. The waters were standing above the mountains. That's the waters that rained that rained down on Noah and all the sinners. But of course, Noah and his family were spared. At your rebuke, they fled. When he said, Rain! <laughs> Those windows opened in the firmament and the water came down. At the sound of your thunder, they hurried away. The mountains rose, the valleys sank down. Satan can't do that. To the place which you established for them. So he established a place for all the mountains and all the valleys and all the rivers and all the land. He pushed it aside. The earth that he originally created was pushed apart. And mountains were formed, valleys were formed, etc. Verse 9. You set a boundary that they may not pass over. That's the boundary for the waters. The waters that settled into as oceans. So that they will not return to cover the earth. As a rule. We know the exceptions are tsunamis now and then, but they do not cover the earth. He sends forth springs in the valleys. They flow between the mountains. They give drink to every beast of the field. The wild donkeys quench their thirst. 
Besides them, the birds of the heavens dwell. They lift up their voices among the branches. That's literally give forth. They give forth their voices among the branches. He or who waters the mountains. Well, we know that who is he. Waters the mountains, talking about God, from his upper chambers, meaning rain. Now it rains. Since the days of Noah, now it rains. The earth is satisfied with the fruit of his works. He causes the grass to grow for the cattle and vegetation for the labor of man. so that he may bring forth food from the earth. God took care of us by providing that. And we know what they're doing now with this pandemic, uh, causing people to not be able to work. They're turning under food that man grew slaughtering cattle and probably pigs and whatever chickens killing thousands and thousands of chickens because they supposedly can't have workers standing side by side to process them but yet they can stand side by side for presidential rallies and what's going on in Seattle I am sure they're not enforcing um, social distancing over there. And wine which makes man's heart glad, so that he may make his face glisten with oil, and food which sustains man's heart. This is all about the goodness of God and what he has provided and unfortunately, Satan is doing all he can to, to cause us to be distraught and down and out and weary. And I say, let us not be that way and rejoice in what we have. And that soon will be with our eternal Father and His Son, Jesus Christ, before we know it, we all have to hang in there a little bit longer. All right, let me continue. Verse 16. The trees of the Lord drink their fill. Literally are satisfied. The cedars of Lebanon, which he planted, where the birds build their nests, and the stork, whose home is in the fir trees, or cypress trees, they put in the footnote. The high mountains are for the wild goats. The cliffs are a refuge for the sephanim. Shephanim, I'm sorry, shephanim. And the footnote says, small, shy, furry animals. Hyrax syracus. That's got to be that. And found in the peninsula of the Sinai, northern Israel, and the region round the Dead Sea. King James Version says Coney. Original NASB said rock badgers. But now they've changed it to Sephanim. Shephanim, I'm sorry. Okay, verse 19. He made the moon for the seasons. The sun knows the place of its setting. You see, the sun comes up in the east and goes down in the west and then goes down around underneath and it comes up in the east. And I believe that every time it goes around, it's about a minute difference it starts the path is like 
like when you're drawing with one of them spirographs and you've got one of them those wheels upon wheels and you're drawing around and each wheel each time you go around the pencil or colored pencil or whatever is different a little tiny bit different a little tiny bit different until you make this beautiful bunch of circles well anyway that's how I picture it we don't go around the sun the sun goes around us because there's another verse that talks about when the stars fall they fall to the earth and if the stars were all over the universe how would they all fall down and hit the earth they're not as far away as NASA tells us you know NASA lies why not lie about the earth going around and around like a like they say it's all a lie and it is important because the truth is the truth and I teach the truth you appoint darkness and it becomes night in which all the beasts of the forest prowl about the young lions roar after their prey and seek their food from God when the sun rises they withdraw and lie down in their dens man goes forth to his work and to his labor until evening O Lord how many are your works in wisdom you have made them all the earth is full of your possessions or creatures it says creatures his creatures so I think the animal rights people have some you know we should never treat an animal unkindly or like they're so beneath us they are beneath us but not to the point where we should treat them any old way and that their lives don't matter God created them and they are his creatures there is the sea great and broad or broad of dimensions literally hands yes hold I'm I'm sorry yes are you busy? yeah can, uh, can you come back in 20 minutes Thank you. I, I'm sorry. Uh, there is the sea, great and broad, in which are swarms without number. Animals both small and great. There the ships move along, and the Leviathan, which you have formed to sport in it. Now that's a capital Y, so you, that's God the leviathan or sea monster which you have formed to sport in it what do you think about that that sounds to me like it's a playful creature that God comes down and sits on and rides around like a like a dolphin or a, a horse in the water I don't know what do y'all think about that it's right there in the Word of God verse 27 they all wait for you to give them their food in due season the animals know you give to them they gather it up you open your hand they are satisfied with good you hide your face they are dismayed you take away their spirit they expire and return to their dust that you take away their spirit they expire and return to their dust that's one other ver that's another verse that tells us animals have a spirit 
you send forth your spirit. Now, this is capital S in spirit or breath. See, the other spirit, you take away their spirit or breath. And that's a small S because they're creatures. But this one is a capital S and it says, or breath. So, I think we know we have a spirit. We have a body, a soul, and a spirit. And to define the soul versus the spirit, that would be another video. Okay. You send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. Let the glory of the Lord endure forever. Let the Lord be glad in his works. He looks at the earth, and it trembles. He touches the mountains, and they smoke. That must be the volcano mountains. They smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. Let my meditation be pleasing to him. As for me, I shall be glad in the Lord. Let sinners be consumed from the earth, and let the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. Now, see, here's one thing that I want to say about this last verse. It's verse 35. Since Jesus came to earth and started teaching us, what do you think he would say about this verse? Let sinners be consumed from the earth. And let the wicked be no more. Well, we're supposed to love our enemies and pray for those who... Um, those who, what's the word, starts with a D, uh, use us, who pray for those who, something like despicably use us. I, I can't remember the word. But anyway, we should have an attitude of, I pray it this way, if they're not a Nephilim, and they haven't blasphemed the Holy Spirit yet, they're savable. They may be doing wicked things right now, but something might catch their attention. The rapture, maybe they have a child and they lose their child and they realize all that really was true. I don't know. I think that the rap the first rapture when the babies are taken and the young, the innocent, the infirm, it's going to make some people very angry because they don't know their word. They don't realize that there's another one. They don't they don't understand. And it's likely to make some people that think they're ready for the rapture to turn away from God. But I think it's going to cause a whole lot more people to turn toward him. That is my prayer. And I don't think we should pray, let the sinners be consumed from the earth. Although, humanly speaking, I kind of wish that would happen. But with the mind of Christ, I say, let's pray for them. We're to pray for the lost and the lukewarm. They are being taught wrongly. They're being taught they don't have to repent or they don't have to live holy because they're just not being taught. I don't think they're being taught it's okay to live an unholy life. 
I think they just leave out a lot of pastors. They just leave that out. They'll teach some good stuff. Easy believism. Pick cherry pick good stuff. You know, but we can't live on dessert. We cannot live on the dessert of the Bible. We have to have our meat and potatoes too. And even even some broccoli and Brussels sprouts. Some people might say, uh-uh, never. Those verses that, that say you must repent and you must walk on the straight and narrow. You must pick up your cross and follow Christ. You must love him more than anybody or anything. You must love your neighbor as yourself. You must help the poor. You know, those, those are some of the verses that kind of grate against people's, you know, like, but that's so hard. I'm always messing up. That's why we have the gift of grace, man. That's why God is so merciful. He knew we were going to mess up. All we have to do is say, Lord, please forgive me. I'm still messing up in this area or that area. I'm not talking about willful sin that you need to lay down. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about living with your girlfriend and you just can't leave her. She's not with it. She's not on the same level as you, but you love her so much and you want to marry her, but she's not quite there and you don't want to leave her. And who do you love more? You love God or you love her? Where does God fall? You see, that is willful sin. Dare I say smoking? You, you willingly go buy them. You willingly light them up. That's not accidental. That's not where somebody at work pushes your buttons all day and the, by the end of the day you're exhausted, you worked hard, and they say something really off the wall and you lose it. That's an accidental sin. God made provision in the law for accidental sin. You, you take an offering of, of a lesser sort than you do for the ones that are like murder, uh, adultery, uh, sleeping with somebody's daughter that you had no business being with, or whatever, the bigger sins. You took a bigger animal, more costly. I don't know all those laws. I don't read them. I don't need to know them. I just remember reading them and I remember a provision for accidental sins. Okay, I'm going to leave it go with that. That's where grace comes in. As soon as you ask, you get that amazing grace. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Just ask, Father, forgive me. Jesus, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Help me to do better tomorrow. Then you accept it. You accept his gift of grace. And you praise him. Okay? Don't beat yourself up. Just make it a point to try to do better. Will you do it again? Probably. I complain too much. I sometimes catch myself gossiping now and then. And I'm like, oh Lord, I'm so sorry. And I repent. I ask for forgiveness. 
and I know I'll probably do it again, but I don't want to. You see? All right. I plead the blood of Jesus over this video, the internet connection, and over each and every single one of you. Uh, let's see, over myself, my computer, each and every one of you, your devices, and all of your internet connections. And with that, I'll say bye for now. I hope that was helpful or encouraging, not just to learn something or remind, it's a reminder what things you already know, but also to remind you who's on the throne. All right? And yes, the lawlessness is growing in leaps and bounds. We're in the final generation. We are seeing it all culminating together to form the final event. Well, it won't be final until Jesus returns. So, by the way, let me just say, any prophecies coming from the Lord that talk about His second coming is not from the Lord. The second coming doesn't happen unless it's in context. Take the whole thing in context. Is he talking to the Jews? Okay? So, don't. I don't want to say blatantly or like a every any any uh, prophecy at all that says that is wrong if it has to do with the bride or the church the church will be raptured part of us first is the first truths and changed we come back we help the rest get ready then the wheat harvest is harvested. When? I'm not sure. I think it's when the multitude too large to number goes, which would be after the sixth seal. That is my interpretation of scripture. You might have learned something else, that it might be earlier. That would be wonderful. I would be most happy to be wrong. So, okay, I end this here. And with that, I'll say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.